here's the video of my making the journal that I did for my giveaway. Um, quite a while ago now, I used to work for a furniture making company, and these were damaged pieces of the inserts of like the bottom of the drawers, and I had cut them down into journal cover size pieces. Um, I did a paint pouring on it. It was a really textured paint pouring. I don't think I mixed my paint enough, but I kind of like the way it feels. It's also been varnished with a clear glass varnish. The insides has a little bit of shine to it or smoothness, I guess, whatever. So I used a little bit of gesso just so I could do some collage on there and it would stick. see that red line was from when it was damaged and thrown in the pile. Here's a drawer of green scraps. I pull out some blue and green and turquoise colors to cover up the inside of those covers. I pulled out way more paper than I used, which is the norm for me. And then I have to put it all away. <laughs> piece of a card and it's too thick so I peeled it. There's the drawer of blues. My ginormous pile. Oh wait, I'm not done adding to it. Oh, there we go. Now it's done. <laughs> I'm gonna use my heavy gel matte medium, maybe? It's getting old and thick, so I decided I needed to use it. I had to make sure my brush was really wet though, so. It acted more like a liquid matte medium, but I need to use that up all around the edges. It's all dried. Some jelly prints. Tissue papers and some mulberry papers. Other random bits and bobs. Some that have been sent to me in happy mail and some that I've made. I don't show the other cover being made because it's the same process. I just did an extra layer of um, liquid matte medium just to make sure all the edges were sealed down. Just measuring it to decide what size paper I'm doing. Um, the edges were pretty rough. I didn't think to smooth them down before I did the paint pour. So I was kind of just figuring out what I wanted to do with that and seeing if it bothered me or not. Um, ended up using 
drawing paper from a drawing book, drawing sketchbook, whatever. That was a long paper. Um, some green cardstock, some white cardstock. The green cardstock has some texture. And then some scrapbook papers that have some butterflies. Some of the pages do, and some have a little bit of glittery um, details. I can't remember what size I cut them to. I left the long ones long and ended up folding them. I didn't show the cutting because that would be boring. <laughs> I pulled up the um, scoreboard, which I don't use that often. And I think I folded the wrong way. Mm, that looks like I folded that one the right way. I think I saw myself when I was editing this fold some the wrong way. I can never remember. Just making sure it fit the way I wanted it to fit inside the covers. And this one was what I did to the longer pieces, so it had that extra fold. I think five signatures. Um, each one had three pieces of the white cardstock, which is what was there, a piece of the scrapbook paper, one piece of the long drawing paper folded. piece of the textured green card stock and a piece of watercolor paper and I didn't put each signature together the same way so it's kind of random extra piece so I was going back to make sure they all had the same pieces I forgot that I cut a piece of the green in half it's an odd number of signatures so I would have an extra piece brain cramp <laughs> and I think it's five signatures it's going too fast I can't see feeling that roughness <laughs> deciding if I want to cover it or not I was feeling lazy and didn't want to do it but decided I needed to mm. kind of like that but not quite happy with it so I ended up pulling out a different color a little narrower to piece of ribbon like that better scissors I'd seen people using them in videos and I thought they looked so cool and they looked like they were easy to use and I hate them I absolutely hate them I can't cut for them I can cut a straight piece of fabric like that or a piece of ribbon but I can't cut paper with it very well I don't know if you hear that behind me it started downpouring Trying not to put too much glue because I didn't want it to mess up the look of the ribbon.
here I'm just using an extra piece of the cardstock to kind of figure out where I want my holes to be. Then I measure and I remeasure and I <laughs> try to figure out what I want to do, where I want to put the holes. How many poles I want to use. <laughs> I decide to put one in the center point and then I think I just go and jump from that each time. Let's see. Or an inch and a quarter looks like. an inch, I can't tell. I use my, um, my goodness, what is that thing called? All oh, pokey tool to poke the holes because I forgot I purchased one of those book page punchers. some glue on just so the ribbon wouldn't fray. Hopefully. <laughs> so let me trim that off. Sorry about it going out of focus. Too close to the camera. Normally I'm not very precise. I kind of eyeball things and just hold them together and they usually line up okay. But this one I wanted to be really precise. So I brought out the clips. But what you'll see is somehow I still managed to not get my pages lined up perfectly. But that's okay. It's, you know, it's the handmade look. <laughs> some reason at first I started marking where the holes would be would be and then I think I just used it as a template which is what I normally do so I don't know why I was trying to do it that way okay. well, I think the pencil lead broke I think that's what I was doing there doing it that way. It had been a while since I've done a Coptic stitch and I showed some of the binding and I slowed it down to kind of normal speed for that part of the process. It's definitely not a tutorial um, but you can see me struggling with reading my directions. I actually pulled out directions I'd had back from college where I learned it. Um, But yeah, it's definitely not a tutorial. It might help you a little bit if you haven't seen it done before, but I definitely would find a tutorial if you are interested in trying it and haven't done it. This is more just my process and <laughs> show you my struggles, I guess, share my struggles. Oh, 
here's where I smartened up and just used it as a template. <laughs> Sometimes the way I do this, I'm surprised that I didn't stab my hand. Usually when I have a sharp tool, I end up with a wound. You can see some of the glittery paper. Yeah, like that was just asking for my finger to get poked the way I was holding that. I have to remember I have that other tool to punch holes. I try to keep them lined up correctly so that they were going the right way when I punched them and still I managed to mess that up a little bit. And there, I guess the glue's dry and I'm just trimming off the rest of the ribbon there on the edge. The scissors I struggle to use. <laughs> They're sharper than the white scissors, that's why I was using them. And I just eyeball um, where I'm gonna put the holes using the template and just kind of try to center it. As you can see, perfection is not my style, just eyeballing it. <laughs> Time to drill the holes. I didn't show the first one because I drumble, I drummled, jeez. I struggled with the drill thingy that I had that was like a cheap version of a Dremel. And so I yelled to my husband and he finally gave me his real Dremel. And that thing went so nicely. <laughs> I just punched, drilling the holes here. And I used those small eyelets to just give them a more finished look. I didn't have enough of the small ones to go on the inside and outside which is what I would have done. Actually, I did have enough, but I didn't know I had enough. So 
I was like short by two and I thought I had another container of them but could not find them and later found them after this was done and I already ordered more but it's on the the eyelets are on the outside I used a little bit of the diamond glaze just to hold them in there the handy dandy ruler my husband bought for me after I lost the other small one he bought for me. Now I found it after cleaning my art room so now I have two little hammers. But this one has a screwdriver on the bottom. So the covers are done actually cleaning up after myself <laughs> time to bind it trying to figure out why the holes aren't lined up. <laughs> I think I, so I tried turning it around. Oh. I guess I decide that's as good as it's gonna get. And those are actually my directions from back in the day, a long, long time ago. And I have a piece of wax in there. Um, an upholstery needle, a curved needle. And I already had it threaded with some cotton string, so I decided to just use that. It seemed long enough. I'm just double checking it to make sure it is long enough. Can't remember how many wraps are on the cover and stuff it's supposed to be for each signature. Hmm. Waxing the, uh, the thread. As I said, this part is not meant to be a tutorial it's just to see my process um, see how I did it if you're interested in a tutorial there I'm sure there's plenty of really well done ones on YouTube um, I like having oh my goodness that was my dog I don't know if you heard him I like having visual directions in front of me mine were written directions so I kind of kept referring back to it and trying to remember what I'm supposed to do. So if I'm pausing, you can see that I'm just kind of thinking <laughs> or rereading. Okay, what goes next? One thing I do struggle with um, when I'm doing a Coptic binding and always have is with the tightness I tend to pull it too tight I often rip some of the papers I don't like them loosey-goosey though so it's kind of a got to find that sweet spot which maybe if I do this binding more I will be able to do <laughs> So I slowed this bit down or left it kind of at a normal speed or if you don't want to watch through it, just skip through it. On YouTube, you can 
make the speed go faster on your own. So you can do that. I would just mute it so the music doesn't get really weird or my talking. But I wanted to show how I attached the cover and how I attached the second signature, which is a little different than attaching the first signature with a cover. And then I didn't show all the other signatures in between because it was the same process. I did show the attaching the last signature along with the cover because you do them both at the same time. And then I ended the recording before I finished binding. I was short on thread, so I went back to see if I had left some places too thin or too loose, and I did. So I went back and kind of struggled with pulling that through, so I was able to just tie it off at the end the way I normally would. You can add more string. I just didn't want to have another knot in there and provide a weak point. If I couldn't have found extra string within the book, <laughs> I would have ended up cutting it and doing it all over because that's just kind of the kind of person I am. Especially since this was for someone else as a giveaway, I didn't want it to fall apart. So I, if it was, if it were for myself, I probably would just tie it off an extra piece of string and finish it off. And if it fell apart, rebind it later, but I didn't want to do that for someone else. So you don't see me tying it off because I apparently didn't continue recording. The other thing I didn't show is the closure. It was because there's so much paper, it kind of the didn't lay flat, which bothered me. Um, so I used the left rest of the cream colored ribbon that I had <clears throat> and I didn't didn't really know how to do a closure for it because I I wanted to do velcro but I don't have any oh I should write that down I want to order some velcro or get some at the store I'm gonna do that right now before I forget um and I didn't know how to make a buttonhole on ribbon without it like just fraying so I decided to use grommets and use a brad so it's not the most easiest to use band and it probably won't last long term um, but it does have a few options to resize it as the journal gets fuller I'm just not sure that the grommets will stay on the ribbon because ribbon tends to fray and the brad isn't easy to undo and do like a button would be or um, velcro but the um i just slide it on and off without i do the put the brad on and then just slide it on and if i were working in it i would make it larger and then slide it back on but it's really just kind of a short-term solution maybe it'll last i don't know but it looks cute for now and i'm just gonna stop talking now because that's the bulk of it i added some of my charms to it because the giveaway was for the charms video <laughs> so the whole reason i made the journal was to put the charms on it to give away the charms and yeah you can see me getting annoyed with the twisting here anyway i'm not going to talk anymore i'm just going to put music back on but if you have any questions, I can try to answer them. Um, hopefully this is somewhat informative and <laughs> enjoyable. I like videos like this, but I don't know how many people like to watch someone bind a book. I don't know, especially with it not being a tutorial step-by-step. -step. Um, so thank you for your support. I. I gave away this journal as a thank you because I had over 100 subscribers, which kind of, well, really does surprise me. And maybe if I hit another um, milestone, I'll do another giveaway. Have a great day and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you.